Hare Krishna devotees, welcome to Shloka a day. Today we'll be covering four shlokas from Shloka 22 to 25. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha. Prakasham cha pravrittin cha. Prakasham cha pravrittin cha. Mohame vacha pandava. Mohameva cha pandava. Nadveshti sam pravrittani. Nadveshti sam pravrittani. Nane vrittani kankshati. Nane vrittani kankshati. Udasina vadasina. Udasi Navadasi Naha Unai Dio Navichal Yate Unai Dio Navichal Yate Una Vartanta it gave um Una Vartanta it gave um Yo Vatish Tati Nangate Yo Vatish Tati Nangate Sama dukha sukha svastaha. Sama loshtashma kanchanaha. Sama loshtashma kanchanaha. Tulya priya priyo dhiraha. Tulya priya priyo dhiraha. Tulya nindatma samstutihi. Tulya nindatma samstutihi. Pana pamana yo. Tulyaha Mana Paman no yo Tulyaha Tulyo Mitra Ripakshayo Tulyo Mitra Ripakshayo Sarvaram Paparityagi Sarvaram Paparityagi Una Tita Sauchate Una Tita Sauchate forward meaning translation and purport by his divine grace Srila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Sri Bhagavan Vacha The Bhagavan Vacha The Supreme Personality of God had said The Supreme Personality of God had said Prakasham Prakasham Illumination Illumination Cha Cha And And Pravrittim Pravrittim Attachment Attachment. Cha. Cha. And. And. Moham. Moham. Illusion. Illusion. Evacha. Evacha. Also. Also. Pandava. Pandava. O son of Pandu. O son of Pandu. Nadveshti. Nadveshti. Does not hate. Does not hate. Sampravrittani. Sampravrittani. Although developed. Although developed. Nani Vrittani. Nani Vrittani. Nor stopping development. Nor stopping development. Ankshati. Ankshati. Desires. Desires. Udasinavat. Udasinavat. As if neutral. As if neutral. Asinaha. Asinaha. Situated. Situated. Gunaihi. Gunaihi. By the qualities. By the qualities. Yaha. Yaha. One who. One who na na never never vichalyate vichalyate is agitated is agitated unaha unaha qualities the qualities vartante vartante are acting or acting iti evam iti evam knowing thus knowing thus yaha yaha one who one who avatishthade Avitashtishthati. Avatishthati. Avatishthati. Remains. Remains. Na. Na. Never. Never. Ingate. Ingate. Flickers. Flickers. Sama. Sama. Equal. Equal. Dukha. Dukha. In distress. In distress. Dukha. Dukha. And happiness. And happiness. Vastaha. Vastaha. Being situated in himself. Being situated in himself. Sama. Sama. Equally. Equally. Loshta. 
Losta, lump of earth. A lump of earth. Ashma, ashma, stone, stone. Anchanaha, anchanaha, gold, gold. Tulya, tulya, equally disposed. Equally disposed. Priya, priya, to the dear, to the dear. Apriyaha, apriyaha, and the undesirable, and the undesirable. Bheeraha, bheeraha, chari. Teddy, Tulya, Tulya, equal, equal, Ninda, Ninda, in defamation, in defamation, Atma Samstuti, Atma Samstuti, and praise of himself, and praise of himself, Mana, Mana, in honor, in honor, Apamana Yohu, Apamana Yohu, and dishonor, and dishonor, Tulya, Tulya, equal. Equal, Tulyaha, Tulyaha, equal, equal, Mitra, Mitra, friends, of friends, Ari, Ari, and enemies, and enemies, Pakshayoho, Pakshayoho, to the parties, to the parties, Tarva, Tarva, fall, of all, Arambha, Arambha, endeavors, endeavors, Parityagi, Parityagi, pronouncer, renouncer, guna atitaha, guna atitaha, transcendental to the material modes of nature, transcendental to the material modes of nature, saha, saha, he, he, uchyate, uchyate, is said to be, is said to be, translation. The Supreme Personality of God had said, the Supreme Personality of God had said, O son of Pandu, O son of Pandu, he who does not hate illumination, he would hate illumination, attachment and delusion, attachment and delusion, when they are present, when they are present, or long for them when they disappear, or long for them when they disappear, who is unwavering and undisturbed, who is unwavering and undisturbed through all these reactions of the material qualities through all these reactions of the material qualities, remaining neutral and transcendental, remaining neutral and transcendental, knowing that the modes alone are active, knowing that the modes alone are active, who is situated in the self, who is situated in the self and regards alike happiness and distress, and regards alike happiness and distress, who looks upon a lump of earth, who looks upon a lump of earth, a stone and a piece of gold, a stone and a piece of gold with an equal eye, with an equal eye, who is equal to the desirable and the undesirable, who is equal towards the desirable and the undesirable, who is steady, who is steady, situated equally well in praise and blame, situated equally well in praise and blame, honor and dishonor. Honor and dishonor, who treats alike both friend and enemy, who treats alike both friends and enemy, and who has renounced all material activities, and who has renounced all material activities. Such a person is said to have transcended the modes of nature. Such a person is said to have transcended the modes of nature. <clears throat> so, Prabhupada writes in the purport, we have to keep in mind what is the context of such a long set of shlokas combined together because Arjuna has asked what are the symptoms of a person who has transcended the three modes? What is the behavior of a person who has transcended the three modes? And then how has he transcended, transcended the three gunas? These are the three questions that Arjuna has asked in shloka number 21. The Lord is answering those three questions in these four shlokas and then one more shloka, which we will cover on Thursday. Arjuna submitted three different questions and the Lord answers them one after another. In these verses, Krishna first indicates that a person transcendently situated has no envy and does not hanker for anything. When a living entity stays in this material world, embodied by the material world, it is to be understood that he is under the control of one of the three modes of material nature, which means as long as a soul is occupying any body, not just a human form, 
you could be the, any of the other species. It means you are under the control of one of the three, if not all three gunas. When he is actually out of the body, then he is out of the clutches of the material modes of nature. That means the soul by itself is not under the influence of the three modes. It is the body that comes under the influence of the three modes. And here the body includes the mind, the intellect, etc. But as long as he is not out of the material body, he should be neutral. He should engage himself in the devotional service of the Lord so that his identity with the material body will automatically be forgotten. This is the most important instruction for us. Ups and downs will happen in life. There will be people that you like and you don't like. There will there'll be people who like you and don't like you. So the most important thing is we should try our best to stay neutral. Neutral meaning we shouldn't get agitated by this or that. Similarly, we shouldn't be unduly overjoyed by this or that. This or that I'm talking about material things. So for what is Prabhupada saying? He's already given you the answer. How does one transcend the modes? He should engage himself in the devotional service of the Lord so that his identity with the material body will automatically be forgotten. When one is conscious of the material body, he acts only for sense gratification. But when one transfers the consciousness to Krishna, sense gratification automatically stops. Therefore, chanting is the best solution for all kinds of problems that arise in our life. You don't get along with someone, chant. Getting into a fight with someone, better stop the fight and chant. So things like this, because if you're thinking of Krishna, then how can you be angry? How can you be jealous? How can you be disappointed? Automatically, your mind is directed towards Krishna. One does not need this material body and does not need to accept the dictations of the material body. The qualities of the material modes in the body will act. But as the spirit soul, the self is aloof from such activities. It is not the soul that is engaged in these activities. It is the body that is engaged in these activities. So if you keep remembering that you're a spirit soul, then you step away from everything that is happening around you. How does he become aloof? He does not desire to enjoy the body, nor does he desire to get out of it. So, a bhakta is not focused on material enjoyment, nor is he focused on liberation. He is focused on only one thing, Krishna. Thus transcendently situated, the devotees, the devotee becomes automatically free, which means you don't have to make any special effort to be a better human being. Simply chanting, hearing, reading, doing sevas to the deities and to the devotees itself will should set you free. He need not try to become free from the influence of the modes of material nature. So artificially we cannot say, oh, now I'm in Rajagun. Oh, now I'm in Satvagun. And artificially we cannot look at it that way. Best thing is to chant all the time, 24-7, if you can. The next question concerns the dealings of a transcendentally situated person. The materially situated person is affected by so-called honor and dishonor offered to the body. So if somebody praises you, you feel very pleased. If somebody even critiques you, then you get upset. But the transcendentally situated person is not affected by such false honor and dishonor. He performs his duty in Krishna consciousness and does not mind whether a man honors or dishonors him. He accepts things that are favorable for his duty in Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, he has no necessity of anything material, either a stone or gold. He takes everyone as his dear friend who helps him in his execution of Krishna consciousness. And he does not hate his so-called enemy. Some very important points Prabhupada is making here. You see everybody as ultimately helping you connect to Krishna. Therefore, you don't have any enemies. He is equally disposed and sees everything on an equal level because he knows perfectly well that he has nothing to do with material existence. 
social and political issues do not affect him because he knows the situation of temporary upheavals and disturbances. He does not attempt anything for his own sake. He can attempt anything for Krishna. But for his personal self, he does not attempt anything. By such behavior, one becomes actually transcendently situated. That means this is Prabhupada is explaining in detail what it means to be Krishna conscious in this paragraph. This is the most important um, instruction for us. A couple of things from Chaitanya Charan Prabhu, and uh, then uh, we will practice reciting. So <clears throat> we think certain things. So um, um, just this this particular commentary and the next commentary will bring some clarity. Because it's not that easy to be unaffected by honor and dishonor. Honor affects us positively. Dishonor affects us negatively. It's not that easy. But it becomes easy over a period of time when you get attached to Krishna. So His Grace Chaitanya Charan Prabhu says, Now we by default observe the world around us. We may not contemplate what we observe. So just as we observe the outer world around us, the Bhagavad Gita is telling us to observe the inner world. So the inner world is the mental world. In inner, there is mental and then there is spiritual. So there are two inner worlds. One is what your mind and intellect is thinking of and the other is your soul. The soul is also your inner world. So when thoughts about lust, anger come, we should understand that they are not our thoughts since they are within us. Example, it is not necessary that everyone who's in our house is ours. Example, a stranger may come to your house, a passerby may step into your house, even thieves may come into your house. But you understand that they don't, they are not the house. They are not owner of that house. I as a soul am different from the body. With this understanding, we as the soul can observe thoughts externally. Just like we observe everything else around us and we are observing other people's behavior, other people's thoughts, other people's attitude, we should similarly observe ourselves internally. What are we doing? Why are we thinking like this? Why are we getting angry? Only when we get excited about a thought like lust, it gains control over us. Before you know it, you've had an unnecessary argument and then you are forced to say sorry you are supposed to apologize. All of that happens. Like Krishna said, na kama kami. Kama kami means desire of desires. So a thought may come in, but we don't have to succumb to it. We can say no to them. And when we say no, they have to go. They cannot stay there very long. Because one knows that these are the modes and these are not my actual thoughts. These are simply the intrusions of the modes and they cannot stay very long with me. They will just go off. So I should just observe them and let them go. So when they go away like that over a period of time, they will stop visiting. So basically the idea is to become a detached observer of your own thoughts. While observing our thoughts, when sometimes we see that we got angry with someone, or we succumb to an anartha in a way we did not want to succumb to, then afterwards we can observe on what was my thought process. It is one thing to beat ourselves that I am so fallen, I am this, I am that. That doesn't serve any purpose. The purpose of spiritual standards is not to beat us down. The purpose of the principles of bhakti is to give us the wings to fly it is not to burden us down with guilt. Very, very sublime phrase there from His Grace Jadina Prabhu. Sometimes when we practice bhakti, we are overcome by guilt about all the things we may have done in the past. But the purpose of bhakti is to uplift you. It is not to burden you with guilt. If a person doesn't have wings and they are given additional wings, then that becomes weight to us, burden to us. Then it becomes additional weight to carry. 
but the purpose of wings is not to add to the weight. If we know how to use wings, then the wings will enable us to fly. When we started flying, the wings become a blessing and not a burden. So the bhakti process is not additional weight, but they are wings to fly higher and higher levels of spiritual consciousness. So initially, when we tell everyone, you know, the Acharya has instructed us to chant 16 rounds, 16 rounds of malas every day. We have to wake up early in the morning every day. These are meant to be wings for you. It is not meant, the sadhana is not meant to be a burden. The sadhana is meant to elevate your consciousness. So if we cannot become, a, become an observer while the thoughts are coming, we can become an observer later. So okay, never mind, even if you succumb to your thoughts and your emotions and you do what you do, at least later on you can retrospect and see what is it that you did? Why did you do that? Why did you get angry? Why did you feel so offended? Have you tried to understand what the other person was doing? So in this way, we can catch the mind deceiving us. We know from scriptures that the mind cheats us, but we don't know exactly how the mind cheats us. While doing any actions, we should be conscious of our current and other thoughts which are coming in the mind. We can call this as conscious of our consciousness. After this, Krishna tells how we can observe the behavior of others who have transcended the modes or how by behavior we can infer who has transcended the modes? So by observing others also, we can understand whether that person has transcended the three gunas. So by observing you, yourself also, you will know whether you have succeeded or not. Is the process of sadhana actually helping you? You can see for yourself. There is one more commentary by His Grace Chaitanya Charan Prabhu. I will post it. Um, in the group so you can read it. But that is the essence of today's shloka. It's a response to the three questions that Arjuna has asked and one final question also gets answered uh, in the shloka that we will cover on Thursday. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel and turn on the bell notification. If you'd like to join our classes every day, please check the details in the description section of this video. We look forward to serving you.